united, working together closely. The French fascists, right, the, the, the fascists in the French state apparatus could then turn around and say, uh-uh, sorry, French communists, you're actually agents of Moscow, and we're going to outlaw you. And that happened in September 1939. So the German party and the French party essentially destroyed because of things that, that Moscow did really not that good. You got to bear in mind the relevant history. Back in a minute. World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarpley here in Washington, D.C. Now, the answer, as far as the United States is concerned, and I would call attention, the attention of our friends in Moscow to this is, you have to remember that the principled friends of Russia, in other words, the people who do it because they actually have an analysis that says this is what they should do, not the uh, you know money-grubbing, unscrupulous hustlers who simply do this as a matter of tactics. No, the people who are actually committed to a long-term cooperation with Russia, like me or the Tax Wall Street Party, this always comes out of two traditions which are really the same. One is the Russia United States alliance of the 1860s during the American Civil War. Check my uh, speech about that. The Russian fleets of 1863. It's on C-SPAN. It is the top lecture, bar none, of anything coming out of the sesquicentennial, right, which ended earlier this year, 1860 to 1865 all altogether. Mine is the top lecturer. Lecture. So I'm I'm America's civil war lecturer, and I'm also a leading proponent of good relations with uh, with Russia, right? And one one little gaffe like this doesn't uh, doesn't disturb that, not in a million years. But we got to clarify this issue. Got to have an open debate. So uh, that is um, is one side of it, right? There's a whole tradition coming out of Lincoln, Alexander II. That had some real consistency. The whole Kennan family is nothing but a deployment to try to tear that down. And then, of course, Franklin Roosevelt and the wartime alliance with the Soviet Union, yes, with Stalin, and the positive potential of that under Lend-Lease and other uh, such phenomenon. And uh, those traditions, that's where you're going to find the principled friends. So it's important. Uh, Think of how embarrassing it is to have done Ron Paul today. Well, Ron Paul today is a stock jobber, right? He's trying to con you. <laughs> he's a he's a fast talking salesman for some brokerage house and he appears on television. How about Rand Paul today? He's still firmly in there at two percent, right? Whatever he says. Is it gonna be Trump today? Is it gonna be Ted Cruz today? I, I certainly hope not. This is this is a bad uh, is bad for Russia, above all, right? Bad for the world. Now, um, this, therefore, is one consideration. Now, in terms of the Republicans, that Republican debate was one of the most appalling, horrific, grotesque events of, of recent years, right? How many times did World War III get started in that debate? Or how many times did we get genocide in the Middle East until the sand glows as the inimitable, sallow-faced hypocrite Ted Cruz points out. So uh, during this program, uh, you can see Chris Matthews is desperate to hide the fact that the Republicans are a fascist party. He's bending over backwards to try to uh, defend them somehow. And he says, oh, there's a real division here between Christie, Rubio, Kasich, Fiorina, those are the warmongers. And on the other hand, Trump, Cruz, Carson, and uh, little Rand, Paul, those are the, uh, what can we say, the anti-regime change. Well, yes, of course. Christie, with bluster, bravado, playing with the lives of your children, right? This thug, this scoundrel, willing to take chances with the lives of your children. And I don't mean the ones who are going to get sucked into the military. I mean the ones that are sleeping upstairs when the rockets go up. You know where they're going to come down. So that's that's Christie. He's glad he's glad to, to be a demagogue with the lives of your uh, children. He would shoot down Russian planes entering a no-fly zone. Uh, Rubio, 
obviously a mad dog neocon. We ought to get a list of his uh, his advisors. Kasich, uh, equally um, unhinged, and Fiorina, right, the bubbling cauldron of hate, uh, the, the psychotic, indeed, I think, probably should have been taken away on a stretcher for therapeutic confinement. But then uh, the other side, we're told by Chris Matthews that Trump, Cruz, Carson, and Paul are really the peace angels. Well, you listen to Trump's – Trump says – I'll bomb the blankety blank out of ISIS. Okay, but that the, what that was a question about is: Are you willing to kill all the civilians in Raqqa? And you don't. Ha- he says, "Yeah, sure, I'll be glad to." You don't have to do that. <coughs> you have to interdict the Jarablus corridor. You don't have to kill all that many people. You cut the supply line, and resistance tends to subside. That's how. Effective military officers do it because otherwise, if you insist on killing everybody directly, your people are going to get killed sooner. This is one you ought to look at the methods of General Douglas MacArthur in the Southwest Pacific, who was the a guy who had the Sherman tradition. I'm going to be economical with the lives of my men. I'm not going to get them killed unless it's absolutely, absolutely necessary. And the men did it, and it meant they could they could fight uh, much more effectively. So. Um, that's uh, Trump, right? Trump says, I'll, I'll, I'll bomb the blankety blank out of them, meaning I'll kill everybody in Raqqa. No good. Cruz, he says, I will destroy ISIS. I will bomb them and bomb them and bomb them. I will carpet bomb them. And I don't know if sand can glow, but we're going to find out. Okay, that's that's uh, the peace candidate for uh, for Chris Matthews. How about Ben Carson? This was one of the most horrendous. He was asked, Are you ready to kill women and children in the course of it? And he basically says, well, you know, I've been cutting open the skulls of little kids and they don't really like it. And I find the main thing is get it over quick. So the answer is yes. Ben Carson, another madman. Uh, These, you know, you can't find public statements by Hitler where he says stuff like this. I mean, very rare. Almost never. Right. They had some sense of, uh, you know, hiding it. And then Little Rand, well, well, Little Rand has nothing to lose. But remember, Little Rand is the guy who is opposed to the Iran nuclear accord, which is the key to peace in the Middle East. And he did that using neocon arguments. And Little Rand wants to add 17 percent to the Pentagon budget, 160, 180 billion dollars. So that's the peace faction. The, 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 the final word is this rotten warmonger bigot Republican, xenophobic, fascistic, fascist, Nazi, whatever you want, Republican Party. This has to be swept aside. And fortunately, Reince Priebus, we know him, right? The head of the Republican National Committee, presumably from the John Birch Society, uh, almost set that off last week. Now, we'll talk about that in a second on World Crisis Radio. Welcome back to a World Crisis Radio. So the idea that there's a serious division in the Republican Party between the warmongers and those who are at least not warmongers is a fiction. It's absurd. Christie's a warmonger. Rubio, Kasich, Farina, that's for sure. But Trump wants to bomb the blankety blank out of women and children in Raqqa. Cruz wants to... uh, Bomb them, carpet bomb them until the sand glows. Carson says he's willing to kill women and children. And little Rand is trimmer. He's an unprincipled opportunist who changes with the wind. And this is the other thing I would point out for uh, Vladimir Vladimirovich. Trump is a liar. He's a lying, prevaricating, mendacious scoundrel. And he has flipped on all of these positions. He's been on every side of every major issue. He's lying. Um, and you can see what you can see what Cruz is doing. Let's just take an example. Everything Cruz does is calculated in terms of manipulation and lying. Cruz says he's against uh, big invasions and regime change. Now that allows him to siphon votes from Trump because Trump says, you know, we need we had four four trillion dollars. We need that at home. All this regime change was a bad idea. So Trump wants to say that, too. 
But at the same time, Trump wants to be able to siphon voters from some of these others. So he says he he essentially he tries to to uh, make his warmongering only specific to ISIS and the Middle East areas, not to Russia. But of course, these are inseparable. So uh, Cruz says. I'm against interventions for regime change, but when it comes to ISIS, we are going to bomb them until the sand glows. Bomb them back into the Stone Age, we heard a couple of generations ago. So in terms of mentality, there is no difference. These are simply calculations. Right? This is uh, a fraud, constructive fraud, which is being built up for the duped American voter. Now, it's not just uh, duped. I... I'm very happy to be able to report to you some progress now in seeing what might happen uh, five or six weeks from now in Iowa in particular, right? Now, you will remember last time around, I certainly remember it, the shock that the Obama campaign was actually a color revolution. In, and we saw that in the first week of January, right, when Obama won the Iowa caucuses, right? This was a huge shock because nobody thought he was capable of this, or few. I don't ever want to say nobody, but few people. I had not actually been paying attention to this. I was still wrapped up in the tail end of uh, 9-11, right? Had, having been in uh, Paris earlier that, uh, that same month of December 2007. But in January 2008, it all came together, and I was out there uh, as fast as I could go uh, and, and indeed with a book before too long, right? Obama, the postmodern coup, the making of a Manchurian candidate. It's all focused on this idea that the methods of the color revolution have been brought home and now being used in Iowa. Now, I'm happy to say this time around, I have been able to construct a conceptual overview of what might be coming in Iowa and in particular, who's doing it. And, um, let us say you want to pay attention to the Ted Cruz campaign and you want to pay attention to a group which is called Strategic Communications Laboratories, SCL, based in London. And the reason we, we know about this, or either way I found out, was simply by looking at the front page of the Washington Post – and here we found that uh, that Trump – here's the little headline. This was Monday, December 14th. Cruz's success aided by big data, a vast dossier of personal details. Psychographic targeting helps him to top tier. In other words, he gets among the leading um, candidates on the, on the Republican side. Now, the idea is – Micro classifying and micro targeting. You profile everybody in depth. They can you, they can get. In one case, they talk about fifty thousand uh, items of data to just to try to figure out who his possible voters might be. In the course of the psychographic targeting, they have six to eight different uh, categories. You can be a stoic conservative. You can be. Um, there's a whole list, right? We, we, we'll put the list up when we go through this. So the idea is you figure out specific mentality, and then you said different messages, right? different statements. It's not one size fits all. You carefully tailor what you're doing, so it's pandering. And uh, the a lot of this stuff is run in detail by strategic communications uh, laboratories. Now, here's uh, here's an article by Slate, and they point out, Strategic Communications Laboratories, quote, assists a new democratic country in South Asia as it struggles with corrupt politicians and a rising insurgency that threatens to bubble over into bloody revolution. SCL steps in to assist the benevolent king of Manpurea, fictitious country, but corresponds to a real one, to temporarily seize power. Oh, wait, that sounds a lot like Nepal. 2005, where the monarchy earlier uh, ousted a corrupt government to stave off a rising Maoist movement. The problem is the SCL scenario also sounds a lot like using a private company 
to help overthrow a democratically elected 